Hello there YouTube. I'm going to show you how the potentiometer works. It's a 5K ohm, 5,000 ohm. I have this set on the 1,000 ohm scale. Okay. It's turned all the way up like if you turn the volume knob up in your radio. We're going to turn it all the way down. It's not quite 5, but it's close. 5,000 ohms. Okay, as you turn it up, you'll have less resistance you have almost none. I'm using this meter because I like it better than a digital, especially on testing resistors. It's not 100% accurate, but when I use my digital one, it flips all over. Okay, we're going to show what one of these looks like inside. Okay. You have a little path in here. Your juice will come in here to the center and it goes out to these little fingers right here I know it's kinda of hard to see and that rides on this path this path is connected from here to here there's a way when you get in doing this stuff I should have studied it before I made this video you can ground this and helps pull stuff back to ground because this is like a horseshoe shaped path here's your contact riding on it Okay. When you turn up the knob, you're going clockwise. On the back, it'll look counterclockwise. You have less of the path to go to. There's two little fingers on here. It's doubled. I know it is hard to focus on. There's two little fingers on this path. If I didn't need this knob, I'd take this white piece off and totally gut it and show you. Okay. So when you turn it down which is going counterclockwise on the front I have it off there so it went past the stop there if you turn it up you have less resistance as you get up to the top you'll have almost no resistance and then it'll be full blast these are the same as those little VRs on a circuit board it's the same principle they're little three-legged the older ones were three-legged and they laid down flat. You put your screwdriver, they were shiny silver. The ones people play with in CV radios. It controls voltage, you can mess up stuff. I learned the hard way. But that's how it works. When you put the cover on, there's a stop in here. There's a little tang down here. There's a little spot in the cover where it's dented in. You can take these apart if you're careful and clean them. That way it has a stop to it. All the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. I do have a video on this voltmeter where I redid the leads and stuff. If I ever get it posted. Okay, we're going to go to another scale. We're going to go to the 1 ohm scale, okay? If you go over here, you'll see 1K. Kind of hard to see on this camera. There's 1K is up here. Gives you a bigger sweep. When I hooked one of these to a speaker, you get about to the end, and then your volume would kind of go blaring. That's just the nature of it. You can add a little extra resistor, different things probably. And I didn't zero out the meter. You can zero out your meter. You should do it with nothing in there, with just the contacts. Okay, we'll go times 10. Okay. That makes 500 5,000 on the scale. That's what I like about this meter. This is how you test a knob. If a knob is bad, what's going to happen is it's going to go like this. You're going to see it go like this when you're turning it. That's the same thing as hearing that scratching in your stereo, in your volume knob. You're going to see that erratic like that. I'm making it do it. Okay, we're going to go to the 100 scale. That will make... Which we have to re-zero. This isn't accurate. You're supposed to do it without nothing in line there. That'll make your 50, because 50 hundred would be 5,000. That would make 
because it's not exactly 5,000 ohms. And these meters aren't going to be, these meters, this meter was assembled in a kit, unless you fine-tune it, it's, that's why I try to check all scales, go from the lowest to biggest on resistors. But you'll notice as you start getting towards the top, all of a sudden, boom, and almost, you can just see it that fast. I'm trying to go to the same speed, it'll just like blare loud. Because you find the end where there's no resistance. It depends on how much power you're running through it. And almost just that last little bit. Okay, we'll just go back to the, the 1K scale. That means that 5 be 5 times 1,000. Just for the fun of it, go back to 1. Let's zero it. This meter's old. It's late 70s, early 80s. I inherited this from a friend of mine who passed away. It was going to go into the garbage. You'll notice it more sense. See how it just jumps right there? It's just the way they are. You're finally getting to the end, and boom. You'll notice it more around on this scale, which isn't as accurate. But you get the idea. When I test them, I try to go at least. I may not go to the 1K. There's times 10, 500 v 5,000. I like testing stuff like this around in this scale. Take it times 10. So that'd be 1,000 ohms. That'd be 500. But you'll see, once you get past there, it just, it'll drop real quick. But that's how they work. And you can change which direction you want it to turn. If I would have had to, this wire over here, which is the ground I just use for purposes, that's the copper color. If I had over the knob would have worked the opposite way. Instead of going up to make it louder, it would go down. So if you put one of these on something, I've used them on speakers, external speakers, so I don't have to reach for the radio, I can just control the speaker. you got to be careful, it depends on how much power you're putting out of a radio. I've never had trouble on a CB putting a knob in there like this. I know there is correct ways to do it by adding stuff to it. And like I said before, in a radio, sometimes all three legs will be on the circuit board, sometimes it'll just use two. Sometimes the other leg will make it go back to ground more is what it will do and make it go back to ground so as you're turning it down it gets over here this will pull more to ground which will kill it down more if you really think about it if you're going over here which add more it'll make it even more it'll help pull it because you're grounding it down more as you get on the end of this horseshoe path get that to focus it will help pull it down the ground more. I have put one of these in a microphone. I, w I just don't have it anymore. I was showing how to do it. Where I had all three of these hooked up so it would pull it back to ground. It was a radio that was open, wide open for modulation. And the little knob on the stock mic kept the radio tuned down. You could turn the knob down and make the radio sound better. It was real convenient. It set on top. It was a knob where the numbers were printed on it and it mounted through a couple holes. It wasn't one of these. Same principle though. But, you get the idea of what one of these looks like. Do like I learned, just start taking it apart and looking at it. I have taken these apart and clean it. Don't scrape nothing there, but I have taken it apart to spray them better. But if it was one I sprayed it didn't seem to work that good, I would actually take it apart. Just be careful bending these little tangs up. Be careful bending up the tangs. Sometimes you'll run across one of these to put on the radio to replace, and you'll find a little piece of stuff sticking up on here. Let's take the cover out of the way. You'll find a little piece of stuff sticking over. Take a side cutters and cut it off. Just be careful. You could dremel out there. Sometimes you'll find them that had a little peg on there, and that's in your way. This one was the same way. I cut it off on this side. Don't be afraid to cut it off, especially if you have more than one of them. That's it for this little how-to video. Thanks for watching.